What is going on? My Reeking Fan, March here, and this is really Fragbox TV. Why do we call it Fragbox? Because lots of boxes. Busy day here. It is a Friday in lovely... Where are we? Toronto. Welcome to the show. If you don't know what this is, this is a... Are we a TV show? Can we say TV show? It's not television. Reality. reality. This is a reality, a reality show on YouTube that follows the ever-changing saltwater store that is Fragbox here. Okay, what's going on today? What's going on today? Corals, 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 yeah. We got a new shipment of corals from Indonesia and we are just in the middle of unpacking it. And I know you guys like these videos because a lot of you are not here in Canada. So you cannot come visit us and you cannot see these beautiful pieces. Hello, what is this? Sign arena? Sign arena, maybe. So let's see what we got so far. These two are gonna, these two, sorry. This is Dylan, this is Tia, not these two. Um, they're gonna continue on packing the order and then I will kind of walk through and show you kind of some of the nicer pieces that we got in and this stuff is all WYSIWYG. What does that mean? W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. What you see is what you get. So the same way we offer WYSIWYG, um, so like when you buy stuff online you can pick and choose based on numbers. This is a really good supplier we have in Indo and he'll literally take the time to snap photos of all the corals. So everything that's here today I personally got to pick out without having to go all the way to Indonesia. Ooh, what is that? Uh, like a meat coral. Mm. It's sometimes a little bit hard to ID them while they're closed. They're a little bit stressed out. So these have been in transit for about two days. They have to go Indonesia to Hong Kong, to Alaska, to New York, to here. Alaska? Five flights. Yeah, I believe these go to Anchorage. Yeah, these look like some Zoas. A little bit tricky to see what they are. These are Ganipora or flower pots. We're gonna let them kind of continue un unboxing them. Actually, Dylan, you want to undo a torch just so we can show people how torches are shipped? It's kind of cool. They ship them upside down and tied to a piece of styrofoam. Yeah, crack that one open just for the camera. Dylan here also has been thinking about cutting his hair and I've told him not to. So can you please comment below and tell him how nice his hair looks? And we're gonna start a petition. Dylan, don't touch your hair. <laughs> It's cool, when I ask people to comment, they really do. So now on this video, we're gonna get 150 comments unrelated to coral. Cut and open the bag, and then they use these rubber bands to hold it upside down, and we have pretty good shipping success on most torches, except, oh, that's a hammer. hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shipped in the same fashion. And we call these hammer bouquets because they come with a bunch of different colors, all attached to one, because branching hammer is not gonna kill each other. Actually, I just shot a video yesterday in that tank showing you how to frag hammer. I think that they'll come out in order. These look really good, so... Okay, they don't look really good. Let me rephrase that. They look like crap right now because they're stressed, but just from experience, I can tell you they're gonna open up great. I'm not seeing any brown sliminess, which is always a bad sign. And how's the water, guys, coming out? Uh, clear? Clear. Clear. Chilly? Actually, a little bit chilly. Yeah. Uh -huh. A little bit cool is actually on the good side. It's better that they arrive cool than they arrive warm. That's very cool. Dylan here has found something very unusual. Yeah, that's exactly, you nailed it. It's like Raja Rampage meets Space Invader. Yeah. Very nice child's form and it's a decent size too. Tia was just telling us a fun story about how she, her Lobo experiment went wrong. You look like a deer in the headlights there. What happened? So this is a Lobo, if you don't know what we're talking about, Lobophilia. It's a type of aggressive LPS coral. How would you describe it? It's kind of like... It's like huge blastos that are mean. Huge mean blastos. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful mean blastos. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You nailed it. There's another one there. And I, th I feel like I told you you can't put them together. Okay, I saw a big beautiful tank that had a garden of People them. People do that and all like, the time. But yeah. it's honestly... Uh, well, it didn't, it didn't work, right? It didn't work. It didn't yeah. work. They don't, they don't stay on contact. Not on contact, but like overnight, they can expel their guts and then like envelop the coral and eat it. Do not yeah, make. Yeah, yeah, don't try it. I don't recommend do it. Do not make gardens of, of lobophilia. Blastos? I really. Sure. I was really hoping it would work. Like, and I thought they were the same, exact same, like not a synophilia. They were both lobos. Like. <laughs> nope. Didn't work. Yeah. Whoever that person is, they got the touch. I, I forget who it is. And the, and they're expensive. Um, this is how they ship. If you're curious, what a box of coral looks like. There's five of them here, and I don't know why they're using these new back-breaking boxes. So this typically would be like three to four smaller boxes, but some sort of, something happened, some 
political, I don't know, some nonsense change where they have to change the box. And now we get these monstrous 120 pound back breaking three foot boxes that carry like 70 or 80, um, what we call coral colonies in each individual one. Uh, what's going on? What did you find? Torch. Oh, torch. You know what? I ordered very few of these because for some reason, expensive torch, they know they're expensive and they do not ship well. So the gold torch, the dragon souls, the dragon balls, the holy grail, the New York Knicks, the super tits, all those, I, I don't know the names, but the real, the nicest of the nice torch, in my experience, they, they do not ship very well, at least not to us. That's how we get the thumbnail photos. I just asked Tia, Tia, can you reach over and pretend like you're doing something in the, there's the thumbnail, that's it. You ever wondered how we got them? Um, this is one of the nicest feelings. It's kind of like Christmas Day when the tank is empty empty and then boom Completely full of coral. So getting better close to Christmas. better than Christmas. Yeah um, We're getting close to the last box here. He is working through it some standout pieces. Let me see what my eye What is catching my eye this right here? I believe this to be a sign arena. No, maybe Tinaria Maybe. I don't know. It's pretty we'll cool. It's and cool. these two open brain corals. This one, red and yellow, very strange color combination. Again, this one with the pink. I, I think love those two. Maybe I wait a day and then let stuff open. Yeah. And then show you guys what all of this looks like in a day's time. It's just that I get too excited when they come in and I want to show you kind of what it looks like. Oh, hello. This is a nice little collection of blastos that we have here. And then we're just grouping them by species so that they don't kill each other because they tend to sting these LPS growth man look at this obvious incredible any DOA yeah no. not even one so we're looking at 265 colonies I think um, throughout the whole shipment not even one dead so far maybe tomorrow we might find that one's a little stressed out I'm not even seeing one that's showing um, Signs of stress. Actually, this is crazy. The one too. that came in with that water. Acanthophilia. Yeah, actually, which lobo was that? This one here, shipped without yeah. any water. It was already dry. Opening. Already <laughs> open. Yeah. So they're a lot more resilient than we think. You know, during low tide, they can be outside of the water for up to a day. But these ones, they, he, he was still moist in the bag. The zoanthids, we probably won't see them open until tomorrow. We have some. Should have some really cool colors. Overall, looking really, really good. I think I'll put down the camera. We'll give it 24 hours. Um, and then I'll pick it up again and show you kind of what everything looks like open. All right, all right. It's been 24 hours and check it out. Look how these corals are looking. Actually incredible. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a slower walkthrough and show you what's going on. The euphilia looking very, very happy. Lots of nice torch coral. I saw a very cool golden one. Ah, there he is. Check this out. That's a really stunner. That's a pretty cool piece. It's got almost like blue tips on the end. These ones we see quite often, is their pink tips. I'm gonna turn down the flow a little bit in this tank. We're using the Neptune Wave Pumps, which is one of my favorite uh, wave makers. Very easy to control. I had it turned up just to kind of clean the bottoms because I don't like detritus. It looks so nice when it's clean and black like that. And then now that they're in, I'll go ahead and turn them down. The Blastos are really cool, some varieties I haven't seen before. These are some nice Grandmaster Cracks Oanthids. If you're into the high-end Zoas, they run. 200, 250 bucks a head, but they're pretty cool. There's really nothing like them. We also got some of these in. People are always asking us for these. Rainbow Dynamite Chalice, ready to go. If you're looking for some of those, let me jump around to the other side. I'll show you some of the Acans. They're a little bit different than the Acans we get from Australia. And it's hard to describe how. They're both Acan Lordoensis. They just, different ocean. They come out looking different, and we get these kind of blue or white mouths that I only see this variety from Indonesia. Plate corals we got a ton of. Check these out, lots of plates. Plates for days, you can have dinners with these plates. Look at them, lots of nice plates. The elegance are looking good. These ones are still a little bit closed. I wanna see them more open like this. This is actually really good side by side. You can see what a very healthy looks one looks like and one that is still a little bit stressed. Some nice lobo. The acanthos have opened up nicely. And this is something actually I've never got before um, from anywhere, but little combos of Ghanipora uh, flower pots. So they can be right next to each other without harming one another like that. And it's pretty clever what they've done. Hold on, for the motion sickness, I'm gonna move the camera real quick. Yeah, check this out. Isn't that neat? Three, four different colors all growing on one little piece of rock. I think I'm gonna keep this piece right here. I was talking about it the other day. It's the open brain that's kind of like pink and green. 
It is such, such a cool piece. Overall, really, really happy with the shipment. And I know yesterday I said that there weren't any DOAs. There is one. So I'm gonna show it to you because I always show you the good and the bad when I sidetrack, check it out. Yeah, that is not a good sign. Don't ever buy a hammer that looks like that. Not good. I do not expect this one to live. Very, very slim chance. I would say, if I had to put a number on it, less than 2%. But in terms of, as a percentage of the order, the number of corals we got in, just one, it's sad, sad for him. The rest of them look incredible. Check this out too, this is a really cool piece. Cynaria, this one too, the Cantho's incredible. And I'm gonna just jump over to this tank over here. If you're looking for some uh, ATI uh, fixture, I'm actually gonna list this for sale on the site. It's a 39 uh, watt, so 36 inches across with two Reef Bright XHO on the outside. If you were to buy everything new with the bulbs, it'll run you probably 15, 1600 bucks. I'm gonna sell it for 500. I'm just gonna try mixing these up. I'm gonna throw some Radeon G6s over here. We don't need this much power. They're quite strong lights. They're really good for growing hard coral. They're actually some of the best lights um, still on the market and you're getting the hybrid. So if you're interested in that, even if you're not in Canada, I'll box it up and ship it down to you. It's um, quite a good deal. We got some cool Favias that I stuck over here. I wanted to show you something that I haven't seen in a while. Aha, they're on the other side. So hold on, before we go there, check out these zoanthids. Check out these cool combo rocks. That's another cool thing with zoas. You can butt them all right up next to each other and they'll do fine. I do have to dip these quite hard because what does that mean? I want to get them nice and clean. The zoanthids, when they come from the wild, there are three or four pests, at least that I know of, that you can find on zoas. They're quite a dirty, dirty coral. There are some corals like over here. This is a trumpet coral. You're really not going to find any pests that specifically eat just trumpet. There's no like trumpet eating nudie branch or spiders or anything like that. With zoanthids, it's not the case. There's quite a few that eat them, so we put these through a very uh, heavy dip and we do isolate them before they go in the tank. But I, what I wanted to show you is this, because I haven't got large wild pieces of acropora from Indo in a while. So they are a little bleached, but polyps are out, so that's a really good sign. Always a good sign. You see how fuzzy he is. And I got two more over here. Check out the size of this thing. That's like good nine, 10 inches across. Nice solid piece of acro. I think it's a millipora, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I am 100% certain it's a millipora because that's what we ordered and that was what was on our sighties. Pretty cool piece, check out the color. This is one other pretty cool piece here, another Lobophilia, but it's like a yellowy, golden, almost green with black mouth. It's got really cool contrast. It's a decent size too, it's kind of funky. It's not, the, not your standard Lobo for sure. One more sidetrack that I want to mention. If you see something in the video that isn't on the website, you can always email us, uh, just do a screenshot like this one here. This isn't typically something I'd put up on the site just because of the size. I know that it'll sell locally, so I'd rather not ship it if I don't have to, but I'm happy to if you see something that stands out and you don't necessarily see it on our site, then just shoot us an email and let us know, hey, I want that, and we can give you a price and the workout shipping. For these little ones here, all of these correspond to our actual site so that you can shop WYSIWYG and get exactly the piece that you're buying, so there's, there's really no confusion. And the wall hammers, these are the Euphilia and Cora. Very, very nice color. So for me, the, the wall hammers come in the nicest colors and the brightest colors, the most unique varieties. And that's gonna be these ones here, all wall hammers. Very cool. Which are a little bit different, actually very different than the branching hammers, which I think are more popular just because they're easier to frag. I think the colors on the walls, and they're just more striking and they're also more impressive when you have a large, meandering, growing almost like this S snake sort of pattern hammer that's just really cool to look at. Very cool plate corals. I know Tia's probably gonna snatch this one up for her tank. And this one here, I sold the one that was in her Studio 12. Um, someone asked for it. She had two or three. I managed to keep one, but I know she's probably gonna steal those ones and add them to this. Her tank's doing really well. And finally, I'm gonna leave you with some of the mushrooms. For the mushroom lovers out there, check these out kind of orange, blue, or back. This, these ones, they're just green, but they're funky with a blue sort of base. We got quite a few of these. So generally what I do is I'm gonna offer just about all of these corals up for sale as the colony. So I don't actually like fragging. The name is Frag Box. We sell a lot of frags. Actually, that's the majority of the business is selling frags. But for me, it's such a shame to frag this up. Look how beautiful it is as, as one solid piece, something like this 
something like this, but the market here, I don't know where it is where you guys live, but here, frags are what sells. Um, I don't like running them through the bandsaw. I don't like chopping them up, even though we do make more money. So a piece like this, we're gonna sell for 150 bucks the way it is. It's, in my experience, it's probably not gonna sell. It'll sit here for a month. And then what we do is go and cut each individual head and sell them for $20 each. And as you can see, 20 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's almost double 150. Yeah, we're putting in the time, we're using the bandsaw and plugs and glue and manpower and all that, but it's it's uh, we make a lot more selling frags, but I'm telling you, I, I prefer to sell the entire piece. I do feel a little bit bad chopping it up. And I think that's about it for today's episode. I'd like to have a life outside of the store, even though it seems like I don't, because I'm always here. Store is now closed. This is my favorite time to shoot. Um, no phones, nice and quiet. I can kind of think straight. I can get sidetracked just a little bit. I really want to do an update on that tank in general, but I guess we'll save that for another video. And I'm just about ready to frag those yellow Fiji leathers there in the middle. I know everyone's been asking for frags. I've done two and both of them died. So not the easiest leather to frag, not like some of the other toadstools. If you like the content, you like the episode, and you're not tired of the sound of my voice, give us one of these and subscribe to the channel. We do videos here, how often? How often, guys? Two to three times a week? I think that's a fair assessment. And that's it. Have a nice evening or morning, wherever you're watching from, and goodbye.